There's a question mob keep being asked in the lead up to this referendum. Non-Indigenous people want to know how we're voting so it'll help them decide how to vote. Yeah, it's a question we keep getting asked here too more broadly at the ABC. So what's the answer? Hi, I'm Frank Kelly, joining you from Gadigal land of the Aora Nation. Hey, I'm Carly Williams. I'm a Kondamooka woman and I'm the National Indigenous Correspondent at the ABC, also here on Gadigal land of the Aora Nation in Sydney. And this is The Voice Referendum Explained. Come on, Australia. Let's stay united. It's about constitutional recognition. It's about listening better and getting better outcomes. So, Carly, we keep hearing this figure that more than 80% of Indigenous Australians are voting for The Voice. That's what the Prime Minister says. That's what the official Yes campaign pamphlet says that we all got in our letterboxes. But the No campaign is challenging that figure. So can we say how Indigenous Australians are going to vote on October the 14th? Oh, Fran, I don't think there's an easy answer to that. I mean, you and I have spoken to people, people who are voting No. This voice to parliament is nothing but an advisory body to white people who have the power and authority to make all the decisions for us. Um, So we feel that it goes against everything that Aboriginal sovereignty and self-determination represents. And we've heard from people who are voting yes. Well, we might be concerned about the detail. The, The bigger picture is that we're all for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people having a say over issues of cultural and spiritual importance to us. I'm all for saying yes. That's Dr Emma Lee. She's a tribal way woman from Tebrakuna country in northeast Tasmania. And before her was Nala Mansell, a Palawal woman from Lutrawicha, Tasmania, and a campaign coordinator at the Tasmanian Aboriginal Centre. So they're both from Tassie, where Indigenous population makes up a small part of the population, about 30,000 people. About 6%, I think. Yeah, 6%. It's pretty small. Um, But remember, Tassie could be key in this referendum with Queensland and WA looking like they're leaning towards a no. Tasmania could be a battleground state. Yeah, and we call it a battleground state, remember, because the Yes campaign for this referendum to pass, they have to get what's called a double majority. So not just a majority of the votes, but a majority of the states. So they have to get a majority in four states voting yes, which means if Queensland and WA are out, then Tasmania's got to be in for this to get up. But let's get back to Tassie later. Yeah, we're going to stay with this question of whether Indigenous Australians are voting yes or no. And there are some areas that are definitely claiming overwhelming First Nations support for The Voice. The Northern Territory, which has the highest First Nations population with its general population, something like 32% of Territorians are Indigenous. It's around 80,000 people. And four of the big land councils up there, which are elected bodies, have signed a declaration supporting The Voice. Les Turner is CEO of the Central Land Council, and he's certain of an Indigenous majority in the Territory for yes. In the Central Land Council region, we have 17 different languages in our region, and we have interpreters and translators We have videos in language, printed information, we hold meetings. Our people have many questions. We find when things are explained, our people support the voice. And how do you know that they support it? They come up and tell us. We hold community forums. Over 12 to 1,500 people have been involved at community meetings where a team from the Central Land Council explains in detail what the constitutional recognition is about what the amendment is, what the voice to parliament is. Once our people hear that, they support it. But it's important to say, Carly, that's the position of the Central Land Council. We can't say that's the definitive view of every Indigenous person in the Northern Territory. True, and a lot of the land councils are supporting a yes vote, but certainly not all of them. But this 80% number, Fran, 80% of Indigenous people are voting yes. Where does the 80 come from? It's based on two polls from earlier in the year. The first was the Ipsos poll, which showed 80% support, Indigenous support. And the second was the YouGov poll held back in March, which showed 83% Indigenous support. But polling analyst Kevin Bonham says those two polls are getting a little long in the tooth now. 
it may be that the support level among Indigenous voters has stayed as high as in those early polls, but it could also be that there's been a drop-off uh, mirroring the uh, the drop-off in the general community, which is now on a scale of about 15%. Um, polling of remote Indigenous communities is so notoriously hard that at one stage news poll didn't poll in the Northern Territory at all in its federal polling, and when pollsters do polls for voting intention for the, the Northern Territory, it's, it's common to leave out five or six of the uh, rural seats entirely because you just can't sample them. So that's where the 80% figure comes from, but without updated polling of Indigenous Australians, we can't really know or rely too heavily on it probably. Why not just go out and do fresh polling on mob and gather that data? Well, I asked about that. Apparently it's really very expensive to do, particularly to get around remote communities. It just costs a lot. Well, there are some pretty high-profile Indigenous mob that are voting no, and you've got Indigenous people leading uh, the official no campaign. You've got the concern Conservative no that says that the voice is too risky, that there's too many unknowns. Then there's a progressive black no who say, well, the voice doesn't go far enough. It's just advice. And then there are those who want treaty first. Yeah, treaty is a really big one because Australia is one of the few colonial Commonwealth nations that doesn't have a treaty with its First Nations people. <laughs> right. So we've got Canada. They've got one. New Zealand's got one. New Zealand has one. And that's what the Uluru Statement called for back in 2017. That's what the government's promised. Nala Mansell from Tassie. She's voting no because she wants treaty now. A treaty would be an agreement between the two sovereign nations where we would look at what it would take for Aboriginal people um, to agree that white people have a right to be on our stolen lands. So a treaty would look at power sharing, an economic base, representation in the parliament and the return of some of our stolen lands, just to name a few. Well, who are you going to deal with? That's the first question I'd ask. And if you go down the track of dealing with 300 or 400 different Aboriginal uh, nation groups, uh, how are you going to do that and how do you determine it? And that'll take you a couple of years to get that all sorted. That's Patrick Dodson. He's a Yaru man and a Labor senator in WA. A lot of Australians, I think, still regard Pat Dodson as the father of reconciliation. He earned that mantle a long time ago. He says treaty is important, but you have to have a voice to make treaty work. The government needs to deal with an entity, a body that's capable of putting forward the process by which these matters can go forward. It just can't walk out there willy-nilly. Uh, and say, well, OK, here's three natives, we'll have a discussion with them and we'll have an agreement. Um, it, there has to be structure, and uh, the voice is the beginning of that. The next steps is truth-telling and treaty-making. Right now, some of the states and territories are working towards their own treaty. Victoria's further along than most of the other states. It's got the First People's Assembly, which is working towards a treaty process. And in WA, Carly, there was a declaration with the Noongar people in Perth, between the Noongar people and the WA state government. It was a settlement, but it's sometimes referred to as Australia's first treaty. Virginia Marshall is a respected legal scholar. She's also a Wiradjuri Niambar woman. We can take quiet comfort that Perth is still running and uh, people are going about their daily lives. Uh, so there, there is nothing to be concerned about. It's just between contracting parties and what they see is doable or not doable. So that is the consultation that they have with, with each other. And as I said, in, in uh, Western Australia with the Noongar community and the government, it was very peaceful, very orderly, and, uh, and that was for final settlement once and for all. So, you know, that's what we need to really step back and take a breath that that's as simple as it gets. There shouldn't be any frenzy or um, any of these issues that are misconstrued. So Virginia says it's just a contract and the government and Indigenous people would have to agree. Yeah, and it's also not on the table at this referendum. I think we need to make that point. The idea of treaty tends to come up a lot, Carly, in some of the scare campaigns, particularly about your land being lost. We've heard all of that before. We heard it a lot during the Mabo debate, the native title debates. And as we discussed in the last episode, we're hearing a lot of it again right now, aren't like we? Like this idea that I'm coming for your house 
boss, Fran, it's ridiculous and it's also inaccurate. Exactly. It's not happening. And Pat Dodson says Australians just don't have a good understanding of what a treaty actually means. Treaties are a bit of a new concept in Australia. Most of us grew up seeing treaties of the cowboys and Indians and broken treaties and Indians marched off to reserves. And, and we've known about the Maori Treaty in New Zealand. But treaties are about, there are agreements between peoples or nations or entities. Uh, but it's about recognition, firstly, of the people you're dealing with. And it's about the recognition that they have legitimate uh, concerns that have to be accommodated within the polity of the um, environment they find themselves within. And, and that'll be a negotiation and, and an accommodation, of, not of all things, but of those things that are, are uh, agreeable, that are not going to shatter or uh, rip apart the uh, foundation of, of the democracy. And Virginia Marshall says even if there is a yes vote, treaty would still be a very long way off. I'm confident that a contract between government and First Nations is achievable and I think, again, it's a pragmatic process. But if it's going to be in our generation, Fran, I certainly think it's probably going to be perhaps in our next generation. But it, it definitely is a process, as it is, um, with uh, the widest possible belief that people will be reasonable and, uh, and sit down and, and, and work these things out together. So that's treaty, but it is not what we're voting on at this referendum. Join us next episode where we're going to take a look at the impact this referendum is having on Indigenous Australians. And what our country looks like after the vote, whether it's a yes or a no. The world is watching. That's it from us. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to us so you never miss an episode. This podcast is called The Voice Referendum Explained. You can find it on your ABC Listen app and you can see us because we film it on iView. See you, Carly. Bye, Fran.